Good morning, everyone, or afternoon. Good to see you all. Um, welcome to the launch event uh, for the tool for self-reporting on impact. We will wait for a couple more minutes for others to join. Thank you for being on time. Maar, de, 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 de dopjes zou het moeten doen, maar ik weet niet waarom niet. Uh, Royan, could you make me co-host, please? Sure, you're now Thank you. All right, awesome. already. Okay, great. Already some more uh, joining. So great to see you all. We'll just wait for one more minute to kick off this uh, launch event. And uh, yeah, so welcome everybody. Um, this is uh, another event from the Digital Agri-Food Collective. Uh, we're launching our tool today for self-reporting on the impact of digital agriculture. Uh, to start, I would like, to, so I myself am Donald Plumpenaar from Bob Inc. Um, I've been with Bob Inc for about four years focusing on digital innovation in, in agriculture. Um, and, and during that time, we also started the Digital Agri-Food Collective. Uh, and worked on uh, this tool as well. So really glad to meet you all today. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll invite you um, to introduce yourself in the chat, uh, your name, organization, and maybe your relation to uh, digital agriculture. Uh, I, I won't forget to also um, introduce our, our partner in this, uh, the Netherlands Food um, Partnership with Royan Bolling. Um, yes, so Royan already waving at you. So um, yeah, so um, without further ado, I'll, I'll pick this webinar off um, while you can introduce yourselves in the chat, please. So today we are talking about uh, the tool uh, for self-reporting on the impact of digital agriculture. So what we've worked on, on the, uh, over the last year is a tool that supports digital service providers, so startups or tech companies that have built a digital service for farmers um, and they have also deployed this digital service to now start self-reporting on the impact that this service makes. And in turn, um, this tool is also for enablers. So we can think of NGOs or donors or investors who would like to monitor and compare the impact of the digital services they are supporting in an easier and more standardized way. So we have two target groups for this tool. So the vision of, of the Digital Agri-Food Collective, which has, uh, yeah, and, and, and we worked on this in, in multiple collective sessions with our members, is uh, seven steps to simple, self-reported, and standardized impact measurement in digital agriculture. That, that's been our principle from the start. Um, so uh, what, we, what we've seen is that there is currently no unified standard uh, and existing impact data is, is really fragmented. So um, standardized metrics would really allow for better benchmarking and also interoperability. And it could also help clarify and showcase the evidence of impact of digital services, which we are all uh, willing to, to showcase better towards donors and investors as well. Because there is truly a lot of impact of digital services in agriculture, but we just need to be able to uh, showcase it in a more standardized way. Uh, and in that way, we could ultimately also uh, influence policy making and also advocacy efforts. So that's our vision. Um, next to that, a, a second principle for us is accessibility and affordability. So it can be quite an undertaking to carry out impact assessments. Uh, these are costly, usually, for digital service providers. And 
um, it can hardly be a profitable uh, intervention, actually, impact measurement uh, from what we see right now. So as a result, uh, many digital service providers have limited impact data they can report currently. And maybe they can only sometimes report impact if the donor is willing to fund a external impact measurement agency. Uh, so our principle is there for accessibility and affordability. But next to that, also convenience. So most concretely, we strive for making a tool that makes it easier for digital service providers to measure and self-report their impact. Uh, and we would like to help them build their impact measurements uh, in a better way for their digital products over time. So um, the principle for us is user-centered design when we develop this tool. So I already mentioned the two target groups we have for this tool. So first of all, digital service providers. So agri-tech startups, but also input suppliers and other value chain actors that have an in-house IT solution um, that, that they are working with. Um, but then also digital service enablers. So donors, investors, other industry organizations that provide financial, but also non-financial support to agri-tech enterprises. So we've, we've listed the needs of both target groups. So when you're looking at the provider, they are looking, and, and here you, by the way, you see Sri from Kusa, uh, one of the agri-techs that is part of the Digital Agri-Food Collective. And uh, they want to use a simple and effective uh, set of metrics uh, that do not require significant resources to monitor. That's our goal. Uh, and it should help them quickly identify improvement areas for digital inclusion strategies and also uh, the metrics to become an industry standard for donors and investors. Uh, so that it's more easy to share what they have measured and they don't have to replicate measurement. Then the enablers, they are looking for grantees. And here we see Vandana from SMV. Um, so they want grantees and investees to report on metrics that really measure what impacts uh, the program leads to. And also uh, comparability and benchmarking is important. And finally, also advocacy towards governments, donors, investors about uh, the data and the insights they've gained. Um, so one, taking one step back, so we developed this tool as the Digital Agri-Food Collective. So as the collective for uh, some of you are already familiar, are even members, other, for others, it, this might be a new um, concept. So as the collective, we uh, strive to exchange learnings and align strategies with the purpose to collectively accelerate an inclusive digital transformation um, and then of agri-food systems, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa and Southern Asia. We started this initiative uh, together uh, with the Netherlands Food Partnership in 2020. And we, have, we, we really see three key stakeholders. So the providers and the enablers, which I already uh, mentioned, and then, of course, more the customers of the digital service. Those could be uh, food processors, farmer co-ops, and eventually what it's all about uh, low-income households, which includes small and the farmers, but also low-income consumers. Uh, but our member profiles are those three groups. And uh, the one, so the members that have directly or indirectly contributed to this tool are listed here. So digital service providers such as Kusa, Eprod, Ignisha, Macropin, Yielder, uh, MDairy, Kilimo, and Kivuno, and, and more as well, actually. And then the enablers, um, which, which you see the list of here. Um, important ones to mention are, for instance, 60 decibels, uh, Mercy Corps, AgriFin, uh, and, and many more, as you can see here. So the process we followed, and then I will really show the tool, which we are hopefully all waiting for. Uh, the process is that uh, we did a literature review, interviews, and co-creative workshops in 2022 and 2023. So you see some highlights of the literature we reviewed. We really looked at the Global Off-Grid Lighting Association, GOGLA, because they have a really advanced way of standardized impact reporting and tracking publications in the off-grid lighting sector. We also looked at existing um, uh, metrics, a lot of them. So some highlights here are Iris Plus, um, 
IATI reporting standards, the Sustainable Development Verified Impact Standards, and much more uh, benchmarks we looked at. Um, what we then realized is that there is no guide uh, standardized metric set yet for digital agriculture. There is for digital innovation, there is for agriculture, but the combination, there is no uh, standard yet. So we started uh, with a lot of interviews with experts and DAC members, as you see the list here. And um, we also did four co-creative workshops, uh, mostly in Nairobi, but also online uh, to build the tool and gather your feedback along the way, but also testing the tool with six digital service providers. Uh, we had a prototype of the tool and we got their, uh, their feedback. So now about the tool itself. And in the meantime, uh, I see you have introduced yourselves in the chat. That's great. Uh, keep, keep it going, I would say. And uh, yeah, you can of course also ask any questions or comments about uh, the tool um, in the chat and I'll try to answer. So uh, the concept of the tool is three key um, sections. First of all, we have to set the context. So if you are a digital service provider, what is the service type you offer? Because there are different digital services you can offer to a farmer. And then what is the user segment? So are you tailoring to youth, specifically smaller farmers, maybe women? So it's also important to define what is the user segment, especially for donors. Uh, it's also really important. Who are the people you are providing your digital service to? Once you have set that context, then you can start to uh, zoom into the actual impact. For that, we have four key steps. Active users. So how many people are actively using the digital service? Here, it's important to mention that um, uh, we, we don't look at subscribers or downloads of your app. No, it's really active users, frequent and active users that really meaningfully take something from the service. Um, then it's service satisfaction. So from your active users, how many are satisfied with it? How many would recommend this service to others, perhaps, with the Net Promoter Score? Those are really two key um, indicators which could be very much within your reach as a digital service provider to measure this. But then, of course, we are also interested in more the intermediate and ultimate outcomes. For that, we give a couple of suggestions which are specific per type of service. Uh, and then eventual impact. Uh, which is hard to measure if you want to keep it um, cost efficient. But of course, it is the goal to still get insights on impact. So we, we had quite a big debate about how can we do this in the most effective way. And we came up with a couple of indicators that collectively we created around impact, especially agricultural performance, but also some other uh, aspects. By the way, what is important to note is that this first version of the tool is only about farmer facing uh, services. So we have left the, those services that are focusing on the agribusiness and the agri processor, we have left those out of scope. But in a second uh, iteration of the tool, we hope to add that, uh, that target group. It's, the reason is that those indicators might be slightly different because you're dealing, your direct target group is the agribusiness and not the smaller farm. And, but we, what is in scope is those services that work with extension officers, uh, because those are very close to the farmer. And then finally, once you have collected your indicators, it's about how do you now report this and summarize this in a clear and usable overview of your self-reported impact. So, the tool itself, um, you have received the download link from uh, Royan in your mailbox. Uh, maybe Royan, could you share it again in the chat? That would be great. So that for those who haven't downloaded it, you can download it right now, actually. Um, so as you can see here, the tool consists of every step of the seven steps has a guidance page and then a form because we would really like to encourage you to start report self-reporting immediately. And we have uh, made 
easy to fill boxes and uh, steps you can follow for each of the seven uh, sections. So I will now share the tool itself with my screen. So um, let me go to full screen with this one. Yeah, so I hope you can see it. I assume if, if I don't hear anything, you can see it. So uh, this is the tool itself. It's a nice looking PDF. So as you can see, there are uh, the three sections which I uh, showed before, getting the context, measuring impact, and reporting on impact. So the same introduction which I gave to you is here on the context about the tool, why we have made the tool, our vision, how to use the tool. Um, here, we would really like to emphasize that we are setting you up for the, your first steps in self-reporting impact in an efficient way. Of course, you can professionalize this along the way. And we leave quite some flexibility actually within the tool to define your own metrics, uh, as long as you abide by certain principles that we set. Also, we really encourage learning and evaluating what is the most useful uh, way of measuring for yourself, because the goal of impact measurement should be learning and it should be um, evaluating and improving your product. So we, we also really encourage you to stay close to your operation as a digital service provider and choose metrics that you measure anyway and that are key metrics for your own business. Um, so in that way, we, we, that's also why we always start from the provider itself and not from the donor because we think it's really important to, um, that, to, to, that it's actually useful for the provider him or herself. Only in that way, you're going to get meaningful impact data. Um, so having said that, here is the first one. So we have five service types. We have access to information, markets, access to inputs and mechanization, access to finance, and uh, value chain management. So those are the five types of services. And as you can see, we give examples for each of them. For instance, uh, Yielder, who is here today, uh, is a typical access to information service. Uh, EPROT is a typical value chain management service. And there are more examples here. Um, so yeah, tick the box, which one applies to you. And then user segments. So the three key user segments that we have set are uh, women, youth, and smaller farmers. So in your data, make sure to at least uh, segment your data for these three uh, types of groups, because those are the most important ones for uh, donors and investors, but also still relatively easy to measure. Um, so that's how we uh, suggest you to, to aggregate your data. Then when it comes to measuring impact, we give a lot of detailed suggestions on what are the best ways of measuring. Uh, so for that, I would like to invite our m and &E, uh, Monitor Innovation and Learning uh, manager at Bob Inc., uh, Raki, uh, to present this section. Hello, everyone. Uh, as Wal has already introduced me, so maybe we can directly go into presenting the second step of the tool, which is the actually measuring the impact. And uh, it starts with the first step. It's defining your active users. And you see the first page of it actually starts with why we need to measure active users. And why uh, we are this tool cares or concerns about not about the subscribers or um, those who have registered or downloaded app where really this tool is actually starts with active usage and why it's important and then it's it gives certain steps uh, how you can actually start uh, measuring the active users right the first step is of course you count you measure or calculate who are the unique users and then uh, the second step is of course what is a kind of relevant or meaningful usage um, uh, for a certain type of services? And what kind of frequency should be considered uh, as active usage, right? So these important parameters are presented um, 
certain example you can see uh, at the bottom there is an example of one such company how they have defined uh, how they have calculated their unique users and how they have actually defined and calculated their active users like what is the relevancy for this company uh, what is uh, what, what is an acceptable frequency to be considered active so there, there are examples here as well and in the next page you can see uh, it's a step by step form so you can see the start with unique users um, it, this form actually also asks for uh, a source of data or, you know, there are the rationale or argumentation. And then from unique users, it goes to, okay, then if these are the unique users or X number of unique users, how do you actually define relevancy and, and relevant frequency for to be considered as active users? And then we have, uh, and uh, and then uh, if a service provider has, when they have defined this, the next step is, okay, now among these unique users, how many of them qualify for that definition of relevancy and frequency to be considered active users, right? And it then finally it, uh, asks for the actual figures uh, disaggregated by the key user segments and some evidence uh, uh, to how they have, how you have actually come up with these numbers. So it's a very uh, structured way of looking into things. It gives the directions, examples, uh, or the case studies. And then even in individual boxes as well, it gives a certain instruction of uh, how a company might write uh, or fill up these boxes. Uh, okay, so maybe we can go to the other section, service sections, I'll spend less time, but mainly actually uh, there are two sections. One is how many are satisfied among these active users and what is an average or what is the rating? In the, there is a methodology section, you can see it uh, suggest certain uh, alternative methodologies. It uh, actually provides guidance on representativeness because we understand that uh, some, not always the digital service providers will have or be able, or will be able to collect data from a large number of their users. So um, all the limitations and uh, the representativeness of the sample and everything is given here. That the guidelines is given here. All the different methods are suggested, and uh, similar to the active user, there is an example or a case study of how a one company has measured such satisfaction. And uh, in the next page, you can see uh, again similar ways that inform of service satisfaction, okay, what question were asked, how they were asked, uh, uh, how, what was the threshold uh, to be considered uh, a certain user is satisfied, and what is the time period, and everything has to be actually written here, so that it's really transparent. Anyone reading this data is not just uh, um, actually being misled, but everything behind is being very transparently put into this form, so that's the purpose. So you see one section, methodology, representativeness, and there are forms as well. Um, Raul, if you can scroll down. Yeah, so what are the final satisfaction score and how many are satisfied across different user segments? Now we can go to the next section, the outcome section. So, so basically in this uh, dark impact measurement guide uh, defines outcomes uh, in terms of desired changes in knowledge, practices, or, uh, or, or resources, or access to resources uh, related to farming of the active users. So outcomes in this tool has been defined as intermediate changes, uh, the changes that lead to a, a more a final outcome or an impact that uh, we define it as agriculture performance. But these are the steps that need to happen. Uh, for example, they should have increased awareness about good practices, they should apply certain uh, practices um, and have access to different resources, which will then lead to the impact. So outcomes, as I said, are intermediate ones. And um, it provides, this guide provides a lot of guidance. It provides guidance on, okay, how do you actually find the right type of indicator? It suggests a methodology that what kind of methods can you use to collect data? Uh, what are the things to consider? But um, it also, this part actually suggests certain indicators to be considered as outcome. Well, if you go to the next uh, page, you see that we have uh, listed certain service types in the context uh, section. So you can see there are certain outcomes that are suggested for different types of services. So if you are, for example, an access to information service provider, you can consider the first outcome indicator of a percentage of active users who can recall the message or lessons or practices as shared by the digital services within a certain uh, time period. So 
so different types of service providers can actually look at the list and may find uh, you know, indicators that are suitable for them. Although for this uh, guide, we only suggest you take the most relevant three outcome indicators. So Rwalda, I think we have covered the outcome part. Maybe we can then quickly go to the, the final section or actually the fourth section of impact measurement, which is the impact. Um, yeah, there are case example as well. You write definition of each outcome indicators and like it's pretty similar to the other sections. Maybe we can quickly go to the uh, impact section now. Um, okay, so the impact here, we mean like the, uh, we define it as the improvement in agriculture performance, although it's a bit broad. We know that there are different service providers some service provider may actually reach this impact by providing, uh, you know, by supporting the improvement in yield or production, while others may, uh, other service provider may just connect them with the market. So maybe they are offering uh, greater or lower cost of uh, inputs, or maybe they are helping farmers to achieve higher prices for their commodities. So um, this impact can be achieved in various ways. So again, we suggest a lot of guideline on how do you define an impact indicator which falls within the criteria of good ag agricultural performance improvement. And we suggest how can we collect data, we embed different examples, we suggest our own example. And we also provide guidance on how can the data should be representative, how should you report on the limitations. And you can also see one case study, Roald, uh, if you can scroll down of how uh, a certain organization has measured the impact on the smallholder farmer that they provide services to. Um, in the next page, uh, so there are the forms, so define your impact indicator, provide rationale, or, the, or the, you can set the theory of how you think you're reaching that impact. You provide a, a description on the methodology, why, when the data was collected, things like why that, uh, what were the assumptions, if any assumptions was made, what condition had to be made uh, to constitute an improvement in agricultural performance, all of those things uh, uh, actually are prompt there. And also the example within, inside the boxes also give a uh, specific example of how, of how this section can be written. And finally, there are impact uh, number forms. So for, um, you define actually for different active users, what is the impact uh, across three different segments like women, youth, and smallholders. So that's about a detailed uh, uh, view of how this form is made, particularly the impact measurement part. Maybe I can now again hand over it to Rwald because there is a final section. Yes, thank you very much, Rakib, for your uh, explanation. Very helpful. Yeah, and please, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead uh, and, and ask some more comments about this, this tool. Um, so the last, the final step is reporting on your impact. So for that, we have built this, this page in which you basically, uh, I'll show it on full screen, in which you are showing your impact on, one, on a one pager. So the, you see the four key uh, sections of your basically theory of change. So you start with active users. You could call these your immediate outputs of your service. So who are your active users? How many active users do you have? How many are women, youth, smallholders? But then the same for how many of these active users are actually satisfied with your service. We give it a positive score and would maybe recommend it to others. Uh, so what's your satisfaction score for active users, women, youth, and smallholders again? And then we can then go to the more, a uh, little bit more uh, distant outputs, but still, um, which you can measure actually, what, what, we, what we recommend, the outcomes and the impact. And we recommend you to, to take three key intermediate outcomes indicators and then demonstrate your eventual impact in the box at the bottom. So what we hope is that we can encourage uh, the sector to start using a same easy to report and, and a structured way of, of uh, reporting impact, um, following the same process, but also really listening to, to digital service providers in what, what can be the easy and most feasible way of measuring, while also listening to, of course, the, the policy goals of donors and investors. Um, all right, so I'll go back to the... Uh, the main uh, presentation, one second. 
All right, so um, now it's time for discussion. So we have an, uh, a half an hour left to discuss this too. And I'm really curious to hear your, uh, your, uh, yeah, your reflection. So first of all, we'll start with a poll. So is this tool relevant for your organization? Let's, uh, let's see what we arrive at with the group. So please make your vote. All right, we got about two thirds of the group who have answered. Uh, I think we can broadcast the results now. So, yes, so it's a very definite yes. So thank you for your uh, support. Uh, but of course the no's and the maybes I'm also curious about. So let's open the floor for discussion with the second question. Do you believe the proposed metrics suffice, suffice the need of your organization and your partners? So uh, yeah, go for it. Anyone who would like to start uh, sharing, um, please, you can un unmute uh, or you can uh, share your, uh, your answer to this question uh, in the chat. So any uh, volunteers who would like to share first? I see quite some contributors to the tool to to the tool as well, so I might actually ask you to uh, to share. Um, maybe we can start with um, let me see. Perhaps uh, Collins from Mercy Corps Agrifin. Or otherwise, uh, Bade Gazin, Alavode. Okay, I'll, I'll keep it going. Maybe uh, I, I saw your. Yeah, or Collins, yes. yes. See you on mute. Uh, I was trying to unmute and I'm also at a conference. So um, I've found it's quite a quiet place at the moment. Uh, to me, we were um, really excited when this process started because um, we wanted to have a uniform way or standard way which you can work with our partners. Because um, um, based on the work that we do, we provide assistance to ag techs and fintechs and then we require to, for them to provide information uh, uh, or data uh, back to us. And uh, um, we, we find them being exposed to this tool or them using this tool to mean that they can easily or now customize their data collection uh, platforms or um, uh, points uh, to be able to provide uh, this kind of information. Uh, but as... Um, Rohan has pointed it out is that at the impact level, there's uh, some resources need, needed to be to be uh, allocated for you to be able to show the level of um, uh, impact that, that you're seeing. But initially, the tool does not require a lot of um, uh, resources to be put into it. It just needs a bit of customization or um, uh, a way that you can just uh, allocate some of your uh, resources in terms of collecting the data. But to me, it's, uh, it's relevant. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, promoting it and uh, even hosting it. But uh, uh, that's all probably I can, I can share for now. Great, thank you, Collins. That's great to hear. And also your openness to uh, yeah, host or share it in your networks, that's, that's amazing. Thank you. Um, maybe Sophia from Yielder, would you like to share? Um, how this could fit your needs as a digital service provider. Well, thank you very much. Uh, for us, we've been finding it a bit expensive to follow ups, uh, especially we'll to get feedback from farmers. And the biggest question was how to, to really evaluate the impact since I mean, in this sector of agriculture impact is based on the practices and following up how they are practicing and what changes is happening. 
So the metrics really will really be very helpful to us to measure impact from the farmer level to giving to, to giving our partners the needed information that they need to follow up. Thank you. All right, thank you, Sophia. Maybe I may ask you uh, directly a follow-up question, actually. What would you need to implement this tool and start using it in your organization? Sophia, if you would like to answer this. Uh, uh, currently, because uh, we are also at the stage of developing of, the, of a new project, and some are about to start, so it's actually timely. Um, now I am I'm right now starting to think how I can make use yeah, of this in the current projects that we are about to implement. Yeah. Uh, can you let me? I, yeah, I really need to rethink myself fun. last before I answer this. So, yeah. All right, I can understand. Okay, well, thank you. That's just great that it could fit your your uh, upcoming process as well. Um, yeah, who else would like to contribute to uh, any of these questions? Hi, may I? Yes, uh, please. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Arna from Wahningham Center for Development Innovation. And uh, yeah, a couple of days back, uh, I think I received this, uh, uh, your email and really thrilled to see the whole thing. So, uh, so explaining my situation is that our team is uh, right now in between of the users and the receivers of this kind of a thing. So we are into developing algorithms of different seed-based seed intelligence and uh, thing uh, databases as well as kind of tools that we have already deployed. And we are working with uh, uh, also uh, these uh, seed pre-ordering and as well as planning of so we are into this uh, uh, seeds uh, seeds systems. So what I was uh, looking forward uh, to ask that, uh, yeah, you have uh, said that uh, this is how this is going to be helpful for service providers. So uh, we are deploying many uh, locally available resources to develop these kind of tools for either making a dashboard or helping the ministry to uh, get plant variety protection or plant variety released in a much streamlined manner. And that's why I was thinking that this is going to be very useful uh, tool for what, because a couple of times I was also thinking that how can we actually measure that how much impact or how much penetration that the, the tools that we are developing has actually gone. So, uh, so taking into account the user type, we are somewhere in between. So we are not directly the developers, we hire developers, we develop the algorithm because this uh, this whole seed systems as well as the seed uh, legislations are these uh, digital developers cannot understand. And neither can we talk this language to the end users because we have to talk the digital systems to the digital uh, developers and we have to talk the policy policies and what they are going to get somewhere in between. So actually, I have no question. I'm really uh, thrilled to see this kind of system and quite, you won't believe uh, from a couple of months, we were thinking that how we can actually pull the data and develop a kind of a self-reporting system where we can uh, get that exactly how much was the effect and how much, how it helped. Because mostly also we are working in South Sudan where we are working on the food system resilience. So we are doing a lot of data collection and we have digitized the whole thing, the data collection using very basic tools. And right now we are moving to get into a data collection and full analysis suite, which will have around 10 or 12 different tools embedded in it. It will do the statistical calculation and ultimately give me some reports, but reports in the form of maybe two by two, four by four tables. And I'm really uh, happy to see this kind of things that it is, it is de developing. So, All right. Yeah, okay. Uh, we will be in touch for this. All right. Yeah. Please, uh, Arnav. That 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 sounds great. Um, I'm really uh, happy you see the potential to also use it in your own programs, either as developer or enabler. So yeah, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us so we can uh, uh, sure. give you any advice for implementing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So I'll uh, answer Walter's question in the chat, but I'll first give the floor to uh, Violen from Solidaridad. <laughs> Race. 
Yes, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. And first of all, congratulations uh, to the team for this work. That's really fantastic to see. I've been looking for this kind of tool for years, so very, very happy to see that. That will be for sure very uh, helpful for us. In Solidaridad, we develop our own tools, uh, but, and we also use external digital tools to support implementation of our programs. And our focus is really on focusing uh, on supporting continuous improvement uh, on the ground. So just to provide some first reflections about question two and three. So that question two, what I was thinking is that, so I think the most critical is really to very well define the outcome indicators, because this is really how we can manage to monitor the impact of using digital tools uh, in programs. So maybe something that I haven't seen in the list of example of outcomes indicators is uh, something about the generation of content and knowledge uh, by the farmers themselves. Um, I'm mentioning that because at Solidarity that we, we work a lot with this idea of peer-to-peer -peer learning, so encouraging farmers to generate their own content and sharing their practices with others. So that could be something interesting to, to standardize and define. And I was also wondering if it would be somehow interesting to add something about digital literacy and having some guidance about how to set up a baseline uh, for the level of digital literacy of users and how to measure uh, improvements. So uh, that would be very helpful. And about question three, uh, I would be very happy to pilot the use of the tool in, in one of our program of one of our tools. So I, my question is how you're planning the next steps, if there is already some pilots identified and how members of the collective can participate to this. That's it. Thanks. Great. Yolaine, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for your positive words, but also uh, strong feedback. So maybe I'll pass first on the content of the outcome indicators to Raki. Uh, I'll share my the, the, the sheet of outcome indicators. So I keep, so it's about uh, knowledge collection by farmers, but also digital literacy uh, by farmers. Um, right. Where that is covered. I think, yeah. Or, yeah. So I think currently the outcome indicated the, uh, the proposed examples of the list. No, they do not have one on digital literacy particularly, or the farmer, like if I understand, uh, like farmers generating their own knowledge through peer learning or the generational knowledge. No, we haven't really, uh, uh, put any such indicators here uh, and uh, is and also we are not I think this tool does not claim to be comprehensive like it covers everything so definitely there are indicators which will be outside of it but these are like more of uh, suggestion suggestions and how uh, for someone who is exploring uh, uh, what kind of indicators that might be right fit but maybe as we can note I've already noted it down to all um, when we are thinking about a second version or the next version, probably after, uh, if we can do a pilot, that probably will get more input. But in the second version, maybe we can think about or explore how can we also incorporate uh, such things like, uh, as uh, as was mentioned, things like uh, digital literacy yeah. and how to measure that. Okay, well, thank yeah, you. Uh, very, uh, yeah. very important suggestions. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you, Rakib. That's a good point. So uh, I think where we kind of covered um, knowledge collect, knowledge gain is also the adoption of uh, good practices and also adoption of conservation practices, uh, which is on below. So this is particularly relevant for an access to information service or a uh, farmer training service. Um, I think these are also interesting uh, indicators. Um, so the process we would follow is again to validate with more partners whether this is indeed an indicator that is shared with multiple NGOs, service providers, donors. Um, so what I would like to emphasize, these indicators have been suggested by multiple uh, DOC members and experts. So it's really a collective process how we got to these indicators because they have been used by multiple actors. But maybe indeed we missed a few. So that's also why this is still the first version. So indeed we will include these two uh, during the testing of the tool. And, and it would be great to test it with you, uh, Violen. Um, all right. So um, for now, I'll go back to the session, to the presentation. Yeah, I see one uh, raised yeah. hand yeah. also. Was. Yeah, no, I, I will cover those as well. Um, first, I will answer questions in the chat. So Walter asked about digital inclusion. 
So what I would really say is that the key way for us to measure digital inclusion is with the user segments. So by collecting data about how many women are using the service, how many youth are active users, how many smallholder farmers, so that have less than two hectares of land, are active users of the service. That's our way to measure digital inclusion. So by segmenting for those three groups, we cover for the most important uh, digital inclusion. Of course, there are more ways to measure digital inclusion, for instance, uh, rural versus urban or educational um, backgrounds of um, users. But these are the three key indicators, I would say. Um, then for Ar Arnav, do we have any sample test reports that we can have a look at? Um, yeah, so the examples in the tool, I would say, um, are based on actual tests or actual projects. So I would say the examples in the tool, on each page, we give an example, uh, give an overview of sample test data, I would say. Thank you for that good question. Uh, then, um, Oyewala, you had your hand up before, and then I'll get to uh, Rebecca. Yeah, um, I think um, yeah. the, the Hobart speaker really already raised some of the points I was going to raise. Um, just to mention that the tool is really very simple. Uh, it's really difficult to uh, be able to put all the key examples of outcome indicator, but I think that the, what the tool has done was to give a key examples and which we can learn from and be able to adapt to our own specific um, usage. The last part, which is the summary part, I think it's really very useful in the sense that you're able to have the active users disaggregated by gender. And um, um, of course, by gender, even when we look at age, I think it's also important that the youth issues are also, um, if it is possible to disaggregate it a little bit in, in the sense of um, male and female also, because so as to really see, it's likely that there may be an inclusion in terms of youths, but there are many youths who are males who are into it. So if we don't unborn do that part of it, we may get to a point where we give an indication that a lot of youths are using digital tools, but uh, it's more of the male youths than the female youths. Mm. Because when you talk about women, women are more of older people who are women, but not in the youth category. That's one thing I've seen um, over time. And possibly sp speed of adoption. Speed of adoption is something that could also be very helpful. And what is could be responsible to those um, speed of adoption? Could it be the way the um, technology was deployed? Um, it's been seen that um, technologies that are deployed with the national system and private sectors seem to get uh, quicker adoption, uh, especially with the extension system. Then when right. you go alone, uh, I think that could be one area to really give a deep um, understanding into. Okay. So uh, maybe, uh, th thank you, Oyewala. That's a really good point. Maybe quickly your organization for the rest of the group. So could you introduce your organization? Oh, sorry, maybe we lost. I think it is the Mdari uh, application in Nigeria. So one of the digital services that are, um, yeah, one of the digital service providers. So I'll get to Re Rebecca. Um, for for now, I will. And um, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, well, you, you... Tech for Hag. I mean, this is. Yeah, Tech for Hag with M there. Yeah, yeah. You, you were uh, breaking up a bit. Uh, sorry for that. Um, for now, I will uh, just share the next steps because Violen also asked for that. Valid points. So what are we gonna do next? So we are on our way to better benchmarking and making impact measurement more accessible, affordable, and convenient. So part of that is this launch event of today. And after that event, we will spread the tool with the wider ecosystem in digital agriculture. Uh, but then the next steps that are listed here is we, we would like to test the tool with more DAC members and partner networks to iterate and improve it towards a version two and three. 
and also align the tool with more donor and investor standards. We have included them, but we would like to make this a broader pool. Uh, and then we are even envisioning a uh, digital version of the tool that is interactive. So you can generate the, the report on a web page and prepare it uh, for your own uh, website. So um, GOGLA, again, so the Global Off-Grid Lighting Association, has already developed such an inspiring impact tracker on their website. Um, so we, we aim to do a similar thing for digital agriculture. So on a website, you can simply add your impact and you immediately generate an impact report for yourself. And then finally, we would like to disseminate the online tool with more uh, DUC members and partners and work together with donors and investors to integrate it into their impact measurement frameworks and programming, which is eventually the most important thing that will have to happen. So my question to you as a group is how can we make sure the metrics are adopted across DUC members and the industry and what could be your role? Um, so please share in the chat or by uh, raising your hand, but for time's sake, also please share in the chat your, your thoughts about what could be your role and how can we make sure adoption across the industries is better. Um, for now, I'll, I'll pass to Rebecca Groot from CBI. Yeah, thank you, uh, Ronald and team. Very interesting to uh, hear all these, yeah, more about the tool and to, to guide us through. I will try to um, link my question to the question you just asked. Um, I was curious because I'm speaking more from the side of, of uh, the donor or a donor um, as we are part of RVO, but also work a lot with um yeah smes in various countries that might also be keen to make use of these tools and the data generated by this tool uh what i was wondering because for us this is also a key part of the information we need is about the business case behind many of these tools so um i i from experience i know many uh, companies are also struggling with pricing and, and ways to generate skill and making it sustainable. Um, and I was curious to what extent that useful data and information can also be captured for that by this tool. And it relates a bit to the earlier question about digital divides or digital inclusion that, of course, it would also be interesting to have some data on the people that are not using the tool anymore or are dropping off or are not willing to jump on and why so i was curious to to hear your reflections on how you see this could fit in this tool or not but also of course uh yeah acknowledging the fact that you want to take keep it simple uh but for me that was a topic that was not yet so clear to what extent it is and could be highlighted thank you Yes, thank you very much, Rebecca. So, a very good question. So, um, what I would say is that active users and service satisfaction are two key metrics that any digital service provider should actually be measuring for their own business success. That that's also what we learned from themselves. That's that's what they set themselves as well during the process. So, and and it's also of course about inactive users. So. You have a pool of uh, a thousand registered users and only 200 are active users. So indeed, we encourage to learn why those 800 have not opened the app for the last three months. And to from, from having those data clear and, and setting really clear indicators, like how many times should an app be opened for it to be uh, considered an active user? Or how, how many minutes should you be on the platform to be counted as an active user. That, that's a key decision that any um, product team should be able to make. And it should really help the product team to also improve their product, to in increase engagement, if they have a clear insight into that uh, active, um, who are the active users and what perhaps what which parts of the app they are using the most. Uh, and this is a really typical process for uh, user experience designers uh, of apps, um, but then it's also about service satisfaction. So after you have asked the quantitative question, of course, it's the question, why are you not satisfied with the service? So we also encourage to add 
qualitative aspects to these indicators. Um, so to ask the why question, why are you not active anymore? Why are you not satisfied anymore? And the outcome and impact indicators could, of course, also contribute to learning about uh, how your product can be become more engaging. So I hope I covered your, your question with, with this answer. Um, for now, I would just like to give the floor. So we have quite some interesting uh, people in the call still. Maybe I would like to give the floor to Matthew Newman from ISF. Uh, who's working on an uh, in initiative uh, also related to impact measurement. Perhaps, Matthew, would you like to share your reflection and maybe also your own uh, activities? Yeah, yeah thanks, Will. Um, yeah, I think overall, um, you know, we, we, I think we've had this conversation other times. Um, I think overall the tool is, 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 is really great. I think it does a really good job at, um, Kind of balancing simplicity with uh, depth of impact. I think I think the challenge was to kind of find what what those those um, common impact metrics are that would be relevant across a wide set of stakeholders, um, but that would be, you know, for lack of a better word, low hanging fruit that, that all innovators could adopt. Um, so I, I I really like kind of the simplicity and flexibility of the tool. Um, yeah, I think in, in terms of kind of application, um, my thoughts are, and, 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 and for everybody else's context on the call, um, you know, we're working on a, an initiative called the AgBase, um, which is looking to be a, uh, which is a case funded consortium um, that is looking to uh, develop a, a, a central, um, essentially a central intelligence platform and information platform for, for, uh, ramping up investment into um, uh, into AgTech. Um, and so I think kind of, you know, where this stands and kind of what we've been doing speaking with investors is, I think this forms, I think another gentleman on the call, one of the new columns who said this, that it stands as a, as a good base, I think, um, for kind of getting um, innovators to start tracking information um, at from the get-go, tracking impact data from the get-go, um, cognizant of the, the fact that you know there will be a lot of funders out there in, in, in the space that will look for more sophistication in terms of metrics, but using this as, as essentially as that, you know, kind of the, the basics and then building sophistication off this. So I really see this as a as a good it was a really good starting point to get to get all the innovators kind of tracking similar similar data from the from the get-go. All right, thank you very much, uh, Matthew. All right, um, anyone else? Uh, perhaps Venu Agarwal from Sixty Decibels, would you like to share your perspective? Yes, absolutely, Roy. I just want to congratulate you and the team on the launch of this tool. I feel like it's the first time in agriculture, in a space that's going to be growing, which is digital agriculture, there's been this initiative to to provide standardized guidance to organizations to launch, you know, their journey of measurement. Um, and so just huge congratulations. In terms of um, how I'm, uh, I'm personally thinking of using this tool, um, 60 decibels, um, for those of you who don't know, we collect data from end beneficiaries or end customers of, uh, various development programs and social enterprises. Um, so we are a data collection, uh, data insight, social impact measurement firm. Uh, but we actually see this as being incredibly useful because a lot of organizations are not able to collect um, actual data from farmers or don't know how to even start on their journey to measure scale of impact, et cetera. So whenever I work with an organization um, that is trying to provide services to farmers using digital means, I will guide them to the tool so they can think about how to start their journey for measuring and estimating impact. And then after that, um, if there is interest from them to actually collect farmer data, I think there's a lot of good stuff that the tool provides by way of just guidance on how they can go about doing it. I loved uh, Solidaridad, um, your suggestion on 
just using the data from that the farmers are talking about themselves. There are multiple ways in which people can um, experiment with collecting farmer data. And then of course, when the time is right, they can work with an external provider. So just um, have this resource available about what to collect and how to start their journey with the collection is so meaningful. And I'll be diverting people to your online portal. Thank you very much, Venu. Uh, that's greatly appreciated. And uh, yeah, very good points as well to reflect on. Um, so for now, uh, for those who have to leave, um, we, we can still continue the discussion a few more minutes, but I, of course, I also like to respect uh, time for those who have to leave already. So for those who have to leave, see you at our next event, which is already next week, uh, which is on data governments uh, and informed consent. Uh, on Wednesday, the 13th of September at 1 p.m. Uh, European time, Central European time. Uh, so it would be great to see you there. Uh, you could have uh, already gotten an invite or you can find it on nfpconnects.com. Uh, but for now, of course, we can still continue the, the discussion um, for who would like. Um, I, I see some more uh, interesting partners, perhaps uh, Case van Duivendijk from NSO, would you like to share your uh, perspective? Uh, sorry, I have to find the, the button. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. No, it, it's for me, it's, it's very interesting. Of course, uh, we, we also had the, the session yesterday uh, talking about the, the role of, of the additional indicators uh, for for specific uses such as food, food and nutrition security. But this, this seems to be a very strong basis and especially also a very strong community supporting this. Uh, so, so overall, I think this, this, this will be very important for, for our way going forward because this is the only way we can actually compare all these complex indicators between uh, our, our role as donor and, and the objective of the private sector and also the transfer from uh, products from public funding to private sector uh, based. So no, I'm, I'm very happy with the, 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 the progress that has been made. And I see this as a starting point, a very important starting point for, for future developments. Thank you very much. All right, Case, thank you very much. Uh, that, that's great to hear. Thank you for your appreciation. Um, yeah, rather guessing your hand was up. Yeah, hi, um, well done. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, first of all, let me congratulate, uh, I mean, you and the team for, I mean, for this, for, for this fantastic tool. Uh, I know a lot of work has um, gone into this to get to this stage. Uh, so, I mean, um, that's it. That um, for us at Tech for Ag, uh, and I mean, this tool is um, actually uh, I like say, um, right in time for us. Um, so that is going to really help us shaping, um, you know, our impact, uh, you know, measurement and uh, reporting. One thing I also um, really find interesting is, um, you know, the follow-on. Um, you know, the installation of this tool, uh, you know, into a web button, you know, where, uh, you know, you can constantly access and also download, um, you know, reports, you know, and all that. I think this will really, really um, be very helpful uh, and make it quite seamless, convenient for uh, anyone to use. However, I know that um, uh, in terms of uh, indicators, in terms of measurement, is also quite vary um, from donor, um, depending on donor interest. Uh, but I'm sure that um, these uh, two are actually provided like um, a background, uh, okay. a solid background that can be built on, um, tweaked or modified to suit um, you know donor uh, interest, depending on uh, as a case may be rather. So that would just be my, my point for us at Tech for Ag. Um, it's a welcome to you. And then we are looking up to further uh, you know, engagement of this tool. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gladiator from Tech for Ag in Nigeria. Um, so uh, great that you that you say that it uh, comes at the right time and that it could be um, 
yeah, uh, helpful for you to to streamline your impact measurement. So thank you for that. Um, I'll give the word to Walter. Could you please introduce yourself and then uh, yeah, share your reflection. Uh, could you unmute, please, Walter? If it works for you. Oh, okay. Your microphone is not working. Uh, yeah, could you type your reflection in the chat, perhaps, or and introduce yourself? And right after that, we will close off the session. Um, I'll already thank everyone again for, for joining today. And we hope to see you next week on Wednesday, the 13th uh, at 1 p.m. for data governance and informed consent. Uh, yeah, Walter, you are unmuted now. I don't know if it works. Yeah, so uh, anyway, um, yeah, <laughs> please uh, send us. Maybe we will get into in touch uh, personally, Walter, uh, for any follow-ups. You can email us. Uh, the email address is also listed on the slide here. You can email Royan and myself for any future uh, discussions. And we really would hope to test this tool with more of you. So we'll get back to you as well uh, with Solidaridad and, and the others to test the tool further. So thank you very much uh, for joining again. And um, yeah, let's be in touch to spread the word about uh, standardized impact measurement. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you.